Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of the F5 Weekend Refresh. We've got some really interesting stories today and some cool updates to talk about. Please make sure to hit the like button if you're enjoying the video and subscribe to us for more weekly gaming videos. With all that being said, let's dive right in here. Last weekend, a Russian gamer named Radar posted a link on the Scrolls of Lore forum. It ended up being a download link to an 18-year-old Warcraft point-and-click adventure game that was mostly finished, yet remained unreleased by the folks over at Blizzard. It's called Warcraft Adventures Lord of the Clans, and is now free to download and play. The game was extremely close to completion when it was cancelled though. It had voice acting, cinematic, and a full storyline revolving around Thrall, but Blizzard ended up cancelling it because the final product didn't reach their high standards. If you look at the game, it looks like you're watching a cartoon from the 90s. It's like Thundercats World of Warcraft Edition, so I think I understand the cancellation on this one. Now, if you've played Call of Duty Online with a microphone at some point in your life, I'm positive that you stumbled across some kids with squeaky voices yelling at their older sister to shut the heck up and go away while he's playing COD. That being said, the Hospital Del Mar in Spain has recently conducted a study on the mental and physical effects of gaming in youth. As for their result, they stated, Gaming use was associated with better function in brain circuits critical for learning based on the acquisition of new skills through practice. Children traditionally acquire motor skills through action, for instance in relation to sports and outdoor games. Neuroimaging research now suggests that training with desktop virtual environments is also capable of modulating brain systems that support motor skill learning. Video gaming per se is neither good nor bad, but its level of use makes it so. Basically what they discovered was that there was a positive relationship between gaming one hour every week and the development of fine motor skills. Beyond that one hour per week mark showed no visible improvement to either of those skills. In fact, the trend starts to reverse once you hit the nine hour per week mark, where children start to exhibit behavioral issues, getting into more fights, and expressing worse social skills. I'm assuming that these 7 to 11 year old kids in the test weren't playing Call of Duty at the time of their testing, but with the massive number of preteens on that game, I truly have no idea. Well, the Battlefield 1 beta is all wrapped up, and people seem to be pretty happy with the result. Following the success of this beta, it seems like Battlefield's spike in popularity may be more than just a momentary craze born from spite for modern warfare. Perhaps it's a genuine shift in the sea of the modern military shooter. EA recently bragged about the results of the beta, calling it the most successful beta EA has ever done, and given that EA only just recently broke that record with Battlefront, it seems like EA and DICE can do nothing wrong as of late. The beta had a total of 13.2 million people playing and is set for a worldwide release on October 21st. Though the beta was incredibly successful, people still need something to complain about. Life just wouldn't be complete if something went well and people didn't have the opportunity to find something wrong. Well, the big problem people have been upset by is the price of the Battlefield 1 Collector's Edition. Complaining about the special editions of a game absolutely blows my mind. The Battlefield 1 Collector's Edition is over $200 and comes with the game, an exclusive DLC with some early access to maps, a patch, a deck of playing cards, a 14 inch statue, a messenger pigeon tube, and a cloth poster. The only things you can arguably say that you need from that is the game and the DLC. Everything else is just bonus. They're giving a ton of loot for the extra money you're spending, and the only reason it's available is because there are some real die-hard Battlefield fans out there that really think this stuff is awesome. Bottom line, if you don't want to spend $200 on the game, don't do it. DICE isn't forcing you to do anything. In other news, a remastered version of Red Dead Revolver made a short stop on the Australian PlayStation Store last week before being quickly removed. It was priced at around $15 in US currency, and I'm not quite sure what happened here. This leads into some new questions, though. Could the release of Red Dead Revolver for PS4 mean that there may be a Red Dead Redemption remake coming? Ideas of a Red Dead Redemption game for next-gen consoles has been floating around for quite some time. The game was fantastic when it first came out, and many players have been begging for a remake version. People have even been talking about all the rumors surrounding a Red Dead Redemption 2 release on the newer generation consoles. This hasn't been confirmed by Rockstar at all, but people are pushing hard for the Red Dead series. They want the game and they want it now. Maybe after GTA 5 starts to calm down a little bit, Rockstar will actually have some extra time to work on new games. So Record came out a few days ago and the reviews have been pretty poor. A lot of people have been complaining about the long loading screens, which was revealed as a problem just a few days before launch. Aside from that, people have been having issues with the storyline of the game. Record sends you on several missions that aren't necessary to finish the story. These missions don't pay off very well, and people say they can actually be really annoying. 
You're also forced to collect hidden objects around the map before progressing through certain parts of the game. While there are plenty of negatives, there are positives kicking around as well. The combat can be really engaging and has a very unique feel to it. In ReCore, you're able to change weapons that shoot different colored lasers. Each enemy also has a certain color associated with them. When you correctly match your colored laser and the color of the enemy, you deal increased damage and can tear through waves of enemies very quickly. While doing this, players must also stay aware of the massive waves of enemy fire that's being blasted at them. You'll be forced to jump, dive, and dash your way out of tricky situations, all while trying to earn yourself some kills. I'm not really sure how I personally feel about the title. I mean, I don't think the game is absolutely awful, but at the same time, I'm really disappointed. If an exclusive game is going to be coming out, I have high expectations for it. Maybe that's just me, but I don't understand why an exclusive game is having so many issues right out the gate here. Speaking of popular games with high expectations, let's take a look at how Pokemon Go is doing. According to Slice Intelligence, who decided to dig into the actual popularity of the game a few months in, Pokemon Go has seen an unprecedented loss of paying users, dropping 79% since the game's population peaked at July 15th. At its peak, Pokemon Go was seeing around 120 million paid users. However, in the two months since, that number has dropped to 20 million paid users. This drop is incredibly steep, but don't start feeling bad for Niantic. Despite the drop in popularity, they're still doing very well for themselves. It is still by far the most profitable mobile app currently on the App Store. When you add together all the revenue that all the mobile games on the App Store made this past August, Pokemon Go is responsible for 28% of it all by itself. As a point of comparison, the next most profitable game, Candy Crush Saga, was only responsible for 4.5% of it. A new 4X game has just recently hit the Steam Early Access program, and for those of you who don't know what a 4X game is, it's basically a game in which you explore, expand, exploit, and exterminate. Get it? Good. So the game is called Stars in Shadow, and it's currently $24.99 if you want to get it early. If you have no problem waiting, there will be a 20% discount for the game on the launch week. The game comes with some interesting features and is very well polished for an early access title. It has seven different factions and six different alien races to play as, each with their own research strengths and technological options. It has a comic book style to it and a high level of strategy as well. You have to move all of your units in a turn-based system and take on many different enemies in your quest to defeat and destroy everything that stands in your way. Lastly, we're going to be wrapping up this week's video with Rocket League. I was able to sit down a few days ago and give a short demo video of a couple games of the new game mode Rumble. It's actually playing in the background right now. While Rocket League is a very skill-based game and has a high cap on it, Rumble is a fun way to relax and just mess around with some friends. There's been an overwhelmingly positive response to the new game mode and all 11 of its unique power-ups. Players have been really digging Rumble, and I've had my fair share of good times on it as well. Aside from the addition of Rumble, Cyanix has introduced something else to the game, a new crate system. Players were very hesitant and even angry about the implementation of a crate system, as they don't want this to turn into a CSGO thing here. Cyanix came out and talked about the new system, stating, Crates will contain cosmetic content only. We have a strict don't sell advantage policy for Rocket League, and we're sticking with that. There will be no Steam Marketplace integration with crates. We're definitely aware of the problems related to third-party gambling in other games, and we are not interested in taking that approach. Players who don't want to interact with this system can hide it entirely with a single checkbox. Also of note, this won't affect or impact our current item drop system in any way. So why did Psyonix even have the idea to attempt such a controversial system? Well, for each dollar that's spent on keys, Psyonix puts some of that money into the prize pool for MLG competitions. In a way, Psyonix wants to use this system to gather profit for themselves, as well as have the opportunity to offer up more money to teams that compete in professional play. The crates contain some really cool new items, and being a fan of Rocket League, I'm glad they're not completely selling out here. I understand the move, and so far I agree with their logic behind it, and I support what they do with the cash. Hopefully these policies remain the same and there's no Rocket League crate gambling going on all over the Steam Marketplace anytime soon. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to check out the YouTube channel every couple of days and look at the website daily. Bringing you the latest and greatest news. This is Sheldon with Gamers Unite. We hope to see you soon.